Let's jump through context managers here. My uh, kind of alternative title for the, for the talk, uh, I thought about this, putting compact interfaces on verbose APIs is the Pythonic thing to do, but I couldn't fit that on the uh, slide entirely. Everybody knows about context managers, right? The with statement in Python, you know, the, the, the famous example is the, the open call you use with and uh, at the end of your indented block, your file handle is automatically closed for you. You didn't have to do anything, right? Uh, that's cool. We like that. It's, uh, it's like decorators for blocks instead of just decorators for functions. And uh, anytime you have an API that kind of has like a before and an after step, or you know, a do and then an undo kind of step, uh, you should use something like this. Uh, or alternatively, you know, programmers always follow instructions, so you can just tell people, you know, always put the after call in a finally block and they'll obey you and uh, you can ignore the rest of the talk. Um, but it would be useful if you have, you know, you close a file or a socket handle even if you crash or you commit the transaction even if you crash or you release the lock, you know, you get the picture. Um, or stateful APIs, reset the thing to the original value, that kind of thing. Um, so with is awesome, context managers are great, but it's kind of a verbose API, right? You have to make a class. The class has to have an enter and an exit method. The enter is the before stuff. So if you need to do any initialization, um, you can return a value from the inner method uh, that is the thing you catch with as. So like you say, with open as file handle. Uh, the exit is the after method. And the exit method has to take three arguments that are all about handling exceptions in the indented block. And it can return true or it can return false. Um, you can use init and accept some arguments to customize your manager. You know, like, like the open takes a file name, a specific file name to, to, uh, to open. Eh, OK, you know, it works. A little verbose. We can do, well, maybe better, maybe just shorter. Um, but you got to get several concepts kind of packed into tight space. So phenomenal cosmic power at our fingertips and itty bitty living space. David Schachter said he didn't care if I did that. Um, for the purposes of this lightning talk, the first concept you have to understand is yield. And I'm just going to say, like, yield is a return that pauses your function. So you can run it again from the point at which you yielded. So if you put yield in a function, it's not really a function. It's really like a constructor for this special generator object. And quick code sample, you know, I have a little do two things function. It prints something, it yields, it prints the second thing. When you call it, what you get back is a generator. You know, this thing is what you get back from the function. That's kind of odd. It has a next method. You call the next, and it prints out first thing, and it yields. You call next again. It prints out second thing, and then it crashes with a stop iteration, because, hey, that's the iteration protocol. So yield, we've got to know about yield. Uh, try finally, I don't have to explain this one, right? And I've got 1 minute and 56 seconds. So you try some code. Usually, if you do something stupid in your code, your program crashes. But you could put a finally block, which is guaranteed to always run no matter what kind of sort of mostly usually. They're not. Cool. I'm talking fast enough already. Uh, so decorators, and no, not in a minute and 36 seconds. We won't explain decorators, but let's just say magic applied to functions. And you've probably used these, even if you don't particularly understand them. You make a class, you make a method, and usually if you leave self off in a method, there's just no way you can call it. Python makes you do the explicit self thing, but if you put that little magic at static method in front of it, it like changes the type of the function and manipulates its signature and does lots of cool stuff. So hey, now you can call it. So decorators, magic applied to functions. All that gives us contextlib.contextmanager. Quick show of hands, who's used this? OK, good, a few people. Uh, a decorator that can build a context manager for you with those earlier concepts. You just have to write a function that runs exactly twice. You can do that by yielding once. You have to write a function that's guaranteed to do the stuff after the yield. And you can do that by putting that stuff in a finally block. You can optionally like accept arguments to your function. You know, that's customizing the behavior of your context manager. And optionally, yield is like return. You could return a value, so that's the thing that gets passed back and caught with the as statement. And you just decorate your function with uh, the handily supplied at context manager. So with 26 seconds to go, here's a sample context manager called CD. Decorated with that context manager here. There's the decorator. I have a try block, and what this one does is it checks to see what is the current path. It goes someplace else and does the expand user so you can pass it convenient paths, and then it yields. And then I have a finally block. That's kind of the after stuff, and it goes back to where it was in the first place. So not very complicated to understand and really easy to use. 
kind of this block of code says, if you say with CD, change to some directory, do some location-based stuff, when you're done doing location-based stuff, you're back where you started from automatically. Context managers, they're cool. And I have no time for questions, so thanks very much.